<laughs> Good morning. Nine o'clock. Sorry, I'm kind of behind here a little bit. <clears throat> January eleventh, twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four. Okay. Not 2023 any longer, guys. It's 2024. I, uh, I've been staying up on that a little bit better now. I went about a week there, writing down January of 23. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> glad you're on here. Missy, glad you're on here. We pray for you guys and Dennis and Glad you guys are here. Susan, we pray for you. I hope and praying that you are feeling better, getting stronger. Sherry, good to see you on here too. Joel, <clears throat> it's a good day. Enjoying our, uh, what, last day of uh, just regular winter weather as the, what is it, the polar vortex comes crashing in on us. Uh, oh, yeah. So, Teresa's mom and dad, they have, a, they have an antique um, wood stove. It, it's one of those kitchen stoves, you know, the kitchen wood stoves that they used back in the day where they would cook their food, and it has the little water tank on the side where you fill it up, and, you know, and you have the water in it. I mean, this thing uh, looks almost brand new. A, a gentleman in their church up there years ago had given it to them it had been in his basement and i don't know that it's ever been used if it had it hasn't been used much and uh but <clears throat> anyway maybe uh someday uh they'll be benevolent <laughs> i would love to put that on our back porch here and uh use it as a wood stove you know and then you could put a teapot on there or something and uh, I don't, it would definitely keep things warm. Nothing like wood heat, you know, and, uh, I just think it's cool. I really do. I'm, I'm not a big antique guy, but I, I really like that stove, the way it looks. And I don't know, those are kind of things, uh, yeah. So Deanna's right down the same line, Dennis. That's good. <clears throat> All right. Well, had our annual business meeting last night. Things went well with that. Um, I will not be on here tomorrow. Uh, we're uh, meeting. Uh, oh, <laughs> shh! Don't tell anybody. Shane's watching this while he's at work. All right. <laughs> uh, Shane, we pray for Mandy. Uh, we do uh, continue to pray for her and. Uh, you uh with her health issues too uh and then i i was not aware until last night but uh yesterday was the three-year anniversary of uh heath becker uh going to heaven and you know we think about it here we think about it here as time and and how how long or sometimes you think wow i can't believe it's already been three years and, and it really is hard to believe it's been that long but um, <clears throat> you think of that, and for him, it's no time at all, you know, that you're sitting there in heaven and, uh, no time restraints, uh, perfection, um, uh, experiencing, uh, true, genuine, perfect love, uh, it's, uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> Anyway, we do miss Heath, but uh, I'm sure he wouldn't want to be back here now. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, what a mess, right? I, I was reading, you know, sad day in America. I, I, did you guys see Nick Saban retired from Alabama football? Uh, he has uh, retired as the coach of Alabama Crimson Tide. So maybe now someone else in the SEC can win something. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. Anyway, yet, uh, yep, Nick Saban retired yesterday, they said. Uh, and then I, I, <clears throat> I, some things you just can't, uh, it, it's, it's like 
it does come out of Babylon B, but this doesn't. This isn't from Babylon B. You would think it is, but it's not. New York City, being the, the wonderful sanctuary city that they are, and the, uh, the mayor is scared to death now because the very extremely wealthy in New York are moving out of state. You know, that is the nice thing about America is you can choose to live somewhere else. And so the extremely wealthy are moving out of New York. Well, guess what? There, there's 2% of the population in New York pay 50 some percent of the taxes in New York. I, I mean, they are like, you wanna talk about rob, I mean, they are robbing the rich. Now, I, I don't, <clears throat> whatever, however way they got rich, I don't know, but it's still ridiculous. You know, the, the money that these gluttons are taking from people so the very wealthy are saying, well, fine, we're going to move. And so they pack up and they move out of New York. Well, so now they're doing that and then they're bringing in all of these illegals. And that's exactly what they are. They're coming in here illegally, okay? I, I don't blame people for wanting to come to America. It's a, it's a wonderful, great country. and But do it legally, right? So anyway... Now they're concerned, they're, they're not, they don't have any taxes, uh, the tax money is leaving, and they're bringing all these illegals into New York City, which was all fine and dandy when the illegals were coming in as long as they weren't coming to New York, right? Well, they get, continue to bust these guys in here. So they took a high, they took a school in New York City, and they sent the kids home and said, you guys are going to be doing online learning, all right? And they opened the school to house the illegals. <laughs> uh, why don't you just do some virtual housing? <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> oh man, I, you you just you can't make this stuff up, you know. And and uh, yeah, I don't know the the reprobate mind continues to astound me in in their lack of any type of common sense uh, so <laughs> oh shoot all right i'm sorry all right let's get into this uh you know it <clears throat> yeah I, I really i, I mean what is it with with McConnell too? McConnell's getting ready to sell America down. You know, he already sold them off to China too. But uh, uh, hey, I, look, we could have virtual virtual living, but virtual rent. You know, you could you could pay through Apple Pay or something. <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. And and I feel bad, you know, here's the problem. Yeah, the 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 politicians both sides, they they do not care. They do not care about the illegals. All right? People got to get that in their heads, okay? They they don't care about them. And they're just using them as a political pawn. And so they're coming here and, and they're thinking that, you know, we're coming to America, the, the great melting pot, and we're, we're going to, uh, whatever they're being told, be extremely wealthy and live, you know, luxuriously or whatever. And now they're living out on the street and they're finding out they've been lied to also. I mean, you know, it, it's shameful what they're doing and, and uh, com I don't know, they've just lost their minds, right? So... We, we, uh, yeah, anyway. And then what is this with, you know, McConnell's getting ready to sell, sell America down the, the toilet too with, you know, he's going to give in to some spending or whatever. And they're giving a bunch of money again to the Ukraine. I, I don't, anyway, I don't know what Zelensky has on the politicians, but he definitely got some dirt on a whole bunch of those characters on both sides are like, we have to give these guys gazillions of dollars. So that's a payoff. All right. Anyway, just reminds me, right, <clears throat> that we just need, and, and, and look, I, I, there, there needs to be a respect somewhat for, for the institution of government. When, when it's done correctly, then 
And there are laws out there that, that are good and, and right, and we need to obey that. And, and we need to do our best to live at peace with that. As long as it's not hindering us from, from our uh, worship of God and, and raising our families in a, in a biblical fashion, obey the law, right? I mean, there is a respect for the institution that God has ordained. And it, it's just sad when you have an institution that has turned their, their backs on God and, and are so completely reprobate in the things that they're doing. And so we live at peace and we, we walk with God. We raise our families in a way that honor and please God. And if the government gets in the way of that, we follow God, not the government. Until then, we just keep moving forward, right? So there it is. There. <clears throat> now let's move on, right? All right, Genesis 26 I was reading here. We have, we have Isaac now. So uh, <clears throat> we have uh, chapter 25, Abraham has, has passed on. And so Abraham is now in heaven. And uh, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, you read this and you have about 13 chapters of, of one man's life. And, uh, but he's gone. And and it just reminds me, first of all, guys, all of us, we only have a certain amount of time here. And so let's let's make the most of it to uh, make an eternal uh, uh, impression upon those around. You know, I, I was talking to a good friend of mine last night, uh, a, a preacher, and and he told me, and, and it's a good point, you know, he said, <clears throat> I hope that that uh, when I die. This is his statement. He said, I hope that when I die, that when they bury me, that you walk up to the, the casket to say goodbye and you can smell secondhand smoke on me. You, you can uh, see some, some you know, scars on my body that, that people know that, that I've been wherever I needed to go to tell people about the gospel of Jesus Christ and that those people, saved and unsaved, will come to my funeral and and look down at my body and say, you know what? That that man loved me, and and uh, it's powerful. And and I I do. I I hope that we can all say that. You know, I, I hope that that we're living our lives in a way that that people know that that we really do love them and and care about their eternal soul and and want to see them. You know, find the. The peace that that um, <clears throat> God uh, has has given to us, and um, and willing to go wherever, you know. So so many times, I think we we get to this point where we want to become so isolated and so holy in in our walk, and we're so concerned uh, and uh, about you know crossing our T's and dotting our eyes just perfectly according to the Word of God that. We cannot allow people to interfere with that. And, and so we, we almost become so, I, I mean, so holy, we think, in our walk that we can't be used to reach the lost. And let's not be that. Let, let's, let's trust God. Let's walk with God. And, and let's tell people about Jesus wherever. And, and you, you know, and, and, and I'm... And, I say all these things, you know, about the government and everything. I'm grateful for there are good churches there in, in Washington, D.C. that are preaching the gospel. And, and there are many that, that um, <clears throat> you know, are, are working in that area that love, love the Lord and are, you know, uh, witnessing and, and standing for what's right. And, 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 I, and I'm thankful for that. You know, they're, they're really... The look, the evildoers, those that have have truly turned their backs on God and and have been turned over to a reprobate mind. Uh, God knows who they are, and and uh, we can try to witness. If they don't want it, you move on and you go somewhere else. But we just need to trust God. We need to obey His word, and and not look to the world for help, but look to God and do what God wants us to do. And it, it said in Genesis twenty six, Isaac has taken over now. Abraham has died, and there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. 
Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Okay. I think I'd probably listen, Isaac. God said, don't go to Egypt. Can I tell you that God's telling us the same thing? Don't go to Egypt, okay? Don't, don't go to the world and think this world is your friend and that this world wants to help you. This world is governed by the prince of the power of the air. And the things of this world, the things of this earth are, are cursed, okay? And, and the things that we need to look to are spiritual. The things that we look to are eternal. We, we need to look to the word of God and, and, and find the Holy Spirit to lead us and direct us and give us the, the wisdom that we need to have. And, and it all comes by calling on Christ and, and seeking forgiveness of your sins through Christ and, and understand he's the one that saves us. And then he's the one that sets us apart and he's the one that will use us and, 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 uh, uh, help us with all of that. And, and as he sets us apart, we are different in this crazy world. And, and, but we still go out into the world and tell people about Jesus. And, but then it goes on and, and he, and he tells Isaac, he says, sojourn in this land and I will be with thee. And then he goes on and, you know, and says the very things that I promised Abraham, I will give you, I will multiply you beyond your imagination. And, and, and Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Isaac, you do the same thing and you are going to have the very blessings that I want to give you. Okay. So Isaac stayed right where he was. He was in the land of the Philistines, which is still part of the land of Canaan. But then it tells us that he got scared and did the same thing that Abraham did two different times and lied and said that, that uh, his wife was a sister. And it just reminded me, I, I mean, how often do we do this? We, we read the promises of God. We know that he's going to fulfill and do what he says he'll do. And then we turn around in a weakness of faith, don't trust him, and just go do our own thing. I'm telling you that we, we need to, we just need to, I need to do better in trusting God to do what he says he'll do. And and look to him. And, you know, I fret, I'm just being pretty transparent here. I fret and stew about this new building and and. We need this. I, I do believe this. I, I believe that God has given us an opportunity at Platte Valley to, to reach this community and, and in a way far more than, than we can imagine. And I, I want to. I, I want to see God do something great here. And, and, and he is. And, and, but we need the room. And so in those those numbers are daunting and but they're not daunting to God and if God's in this then God's going to take care of it and so we need to just keep moving forward and and doing what we need to to reach people and and see God do something great and 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 trust the promises that God gives us and and so and, and he just needs to show us right and don't let fear cause me or cause you to be unfaithful to God. Trust what God's word says. First of all, make sure that you're a child of God. You got to be adopted into the family. That comes by you surrendering your heart, humbling yourself, the realization you're a sinner, understanding Jesus is God who died on that cross for your sins, was buried, rose again, did the work to, to suffice the wrath of God and we call and trust on Jesus, and he gives us eternal life. And if you know that, then trust him and walk with him and obey him, and it will uh, be okay. And, and, and he gives us his wisdom And, and in, in this crazy day. And I, I'm not going to because I've already went too long on this, but Psalm 10. Psalm 10 is a wonderful psalm to go read, guys, where... We think about the craziness in this world and, and all of the, you know, the, just the ludicrous uh, immorality that's around us everywhere. And uh, it's just a good psalm. It starts off exactly what we would be thinking. You know, Lord, here are these evil people. And, but it ends with knowing that God will do what he says he'll do, right? <clears throat> and then verse, uh, verses 7 and 8 in, in Proverbs 3 Look at this. It says, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. You know, we, we need to, 
we need to pray far more about asking God to give us his wisdom and, and, and to walk in a way that, that it's, it's not our way. I mean, we get up, we make decisions all day long. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that, you know? And we never include God in any of this. And it's just like the rich man, that the big farmer, you know, that, uh, you know, he said, wow, you know, I got this great crop. Now I need to build a bigger barn. And, and God says, you know, too bad for that because here, here you are, you're going to gain all this wealth, you think, and, and tonight uh, you're going to give an account for your soul, you know? And we need to just trust the Lord and, and walk with him and, and be not wise in thine own eyes, but be wise in, in what he gives us. And then it says, fear the Lord, we should do that and depart from evil. You know, that, that's the thing. We, we live in an evil day, but we do not have to be evil. And we should not be. And we have the power of the Holy Spirit that will help us and, and guide us and, and direct us. And he's always ever present with us. And so let's, uh, let's walk with that knowledge and, and that faith and, and not be hindered by fear that so often we are, right? And then I was reading in Matthew. I, I know I'm skipping around a lot today, but I wanted to get to this. I didn't get to it yesterday. And Matthew chapter 8, verse 17 talks about Jesus. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. You know, I, I think about everything that Jesus has carried for us. Back in Isaiah 53, verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I mean, think about everything <clears throat> that's going on with our, with, with our people. I, I mean... Satan loves to attack. And, and when <clears throat> that also tells me that we're doing something right, when Satan really gets after us. <clears throat> and right now, we're, we are. We're, we have people in our church that are being attacked and uh, through illness and, and not just illnesses, but I mean, we have, you know, marriages that are struggling at times. And, and you guys got to know, it's not your spouse that's the enemy. It's it's Satan that's causing these things. And so you got to fight it on the spiritual side of things. But you have families that are, you, you have, you know, you have the, the culture that's attacking our children. You have, you, you know, the, the burden of the high prices of everything. I, I mean, you have those in our church that are dealing with these horrible sicknesses right now, all of those things. And, and here, you know what we got to get back to? With our faith, our trust, our hope, it's all in Jesus. And, and I, I love this, that not only was he wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, but he has also borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And then in verse 17 of chapter 8 of Matthew, took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. I mean, Jesus is there for all of this, guys. And, and, and we need to remember that and, and trust the promises that God gives us. There in Matthew chapter 8, he went, in, went on to show us that, hey, I'm capable of doing what I'm telling you. And, and we need to trust that he's there to take our infirmities, bear our sicknesses. And then he goes on <clears throat> and he tells them in the next few verses, verses 18 through 22, you know what? I, I am worth following. Give up everything and follow me. <clears throat> That's what he's saying in those next, in verses 18 through 22. Nothing better than just being sold out totally to God and, and follow, follow him, right? And then he goes on in verses 23 through 27 and shows that he is able to get you through whatever comes. He has power over all of nature. If he wants to control it, he does. If he doesn't, he's using it to get people's attention. And But he is powerful enough to do those things. And that's what he shows us by taking the, the great tempest that was going on in the sea and it was about to kill all these fishermen. 
the, the apostles, and, and he saves them. I mean, he has total control over all of those things. And then, so we trust him, even in the toughest of times. And, and then verse 24, or 34, look at this. He goes in, and he heals the, the men that were demon-possessed. You know what I think, too? <clears throat> I, I don't know that in, in the easier days of America, maybe we just didn't see it. Maybe it wasn't brought out. Maybe it wasn't as evident. Okay, but I th I think the the closer we get, the more evident it is of those who are possessed. I think that we are seeing many people that are that are demonically possessed. And I mean, you read in the in the the gospels, and there were all kinds of people that came out that were possessed. Now I know it's a demonic attack on Jesus. They were trying to do everything to to uh, stop and foil the plans of God and. So I'm sure that's one of the reasons, but I also believe that we're seeing more and more and more of that here in America, and and it's demonic, and, and don't think that those things are good. I, I saw in April that uh, here in Morgan County at the the hall, you know the the uh, you know a reprobate place there in in Fort Morgan that they're having some kind of a three day festival, and it's demonic. That's all it is. It's a demonic festival for three days, and they're advertising it. And, you, you know, uh, look, the things of this world aren't good, and they're not going to help you at all. As a matter of fact, they're just going to help get you to open your mind to more of the demonic attacks. Well, he goes in, and he saves these, these two men and casts them out into the herd of pigs, remember? I have a question on that, and I don't have an answer yet. Why did the Jews have a bunch of pigs? Hmm. That's a that was an unclean animal. I don't, I don't even know why they had had pigs. Maybe it wasn't a Jew. I don't know, but uh, definitely a Jewish time, and <clears throat> and that's who Jesus was focused on. But anyway, it tells us they cast them out. The herders of the pigs ran into town, told them, and the people of the town came out. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coast. They don't want any part of that. Can I tell you, let's not be ashamed uh, of what Jesus does. You know, let, let's, not be, let, let's not be afraid of, of letting God change our lives into what he wants us to be instead of what we think we want people to perceive us to be. Let's just be what God wants us to be and not be ashamed of that. Let's not be ashamed of, of God, you know, taking people in our own church family and changing them. Don't, don't be embarrassed by the people in Platte Valley, Baptist, you know. I, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm thrilled. I, I know that people have a lot of work to do in their lives. And praise the Lord. I'm glad that everybody from all kinds of different walks are there and, and uh, help them take them where they're at and help them get where they need to be and see God do something incredible uh, in their lives. So it's a good day, isn't it? It's Thursday. Sound, it definitely looks like the wind's blowing. Here in town, it's a little harder, but you can hear it above the rooftops blowing. So it's uh, definitely a uh, the, the day before the storm, right? So <clears throat> anyway, it's Thursday. Don't forget, I won't be on here tomorrow. I'll have that meeting. Pray for that if you would. We're meeting with the builder, just trying to get some direction and some things, uh, trying to get some solid numbers also on, on the new building so that we can start moving forward and, and uh, just pray for God's wisdom, God's leading and all of that. And uh, hey, it's a good day. Let's go out. Let's have a great weekend. I know it's supposed to be incredibly cold on Sunday, you know what? It'll be warm in the building. Come on out and uh, let's worship the Lord together. I don't think the weather's supposed to be bad other than just really cold. So, uh, but uh, yeah, so God bless you guys. Let's have a great weekend and Lord willing, I'll see you on Monday.